my dear, I welcome you once again to the Way of Salvation program. And I do believe that you are being enlightened and you are living in faith and in peace. As I said in the last episode, the Lord Jesus Christ intentionally brought the disciples to the Sea of Galilee to test their faith. He wanted to see whether the people were very close to him who professed to have faith in him was real or fake. That is why he brought them there. So the lesson you can learn from that story is that God's eyes are watching you. God is watching what you will do in these times. You see, be very careful of the way you react because God's eyes are watching you. Amen. Uh, as I continue today, I want us to look at what happens when you invite fear into your body. What happens when you invite fear into your body? Don't forget that in the other episode, I said that unfortunately, some Christians have invited fear into our bodies. And I said fear is a very powerful tool of the whole demonic kingdom to be used against humanity. So what happens when you allow fear into your body? That's what I want us to look at today. The first thing that happens is that fear will let you forget the person you are with. As we continue to draw lessons from Mark chapter 4, verse 36 to 40 that we read in the last episode, what can we say about that? That when you allow fear into your body, I said, fear will let you forget the person you are with. When you let us go through the story again of Mark 4, 36 to 40, The disciples forgot who they were with. They were taken aback completely. They forgot themselves. They were just using their human strength. Trying to put the water out. Trying to use their minds. And trying to to do whatever they had to do. They forgot who they were with. It was all because of fear. That is exactly what we are doing in the world right now. In the face of this coronavirus, many professed Christians have forgotten who we are with. To remind you, we are connected to God Almighty. I pray that God will reveal himself to you one day. Even demons cannot watch him. My Bible says, no one can see God and live. You see, it is all because we human beings, we have not seen God before. But I want you to to understand and encourage you as a Christian that the God we have put our faith in is very powerful. I don't have words to, to, to describe our God. Everything you see came from his mouth. He spoke and the whole world came into being. So if you are with God, you don't let fear cause you to forget who you are with. The disciples forgot themselves. So in the face of this global challenge, or the coronavirus, please don't forget who you have believed. You believed almighty God who created the heavens and the earth. Don't forget that. The disciples forgot themselves. Many Christians have forgotten themselves. Be awakened again that you are with God almighty. So you have to live in peace. You see, if God created everything you see, then don't allow fear to cause you to forget that. The disciples forgot that. That is the first point. The second point is that fear will let you use your own strength. Fear will let you depend on your own strength. And if you have forgotten, I want to remind you that the Bible says, curse be anyone who depends on the arm of flesh. It is a curse to depend on human expertise. But look at what is happening in the world right now. Medical doctors are champions. They are champions now. 
What they say is what the presidents take. Their advice is moving the world now. You see, it means human beings are dwelling on the arm of flesh. And it is wrong. It's all because of fear. We have forgotten God and we have resorted to human expertise. So we are depending now on the shoulder or the arm of human. And that is wrong. It is completely erroneous. You don't have to depend on human flesh. Don't use your strength to do this. Haven't you heard that some of the doctors are saying, we don't know what to do again. It means human beings cannot help you. Don't use your strength because of fear. When people are afraid of, of certain things, they try to use their strength. But sometimes it doesn't work. So that is the second point. The third point has to do with the fact that fear will let you disregard what someone can do for you. Fear will let you disregard what someone can do for you. When you are at home and, and uh, you need some water, you can be saying, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, when someone can fetch you water. You see? So they forgot that they were with Jesus and they forgot themselves or they disregarded what Jesus could do for them. You see? So don't disregard what Jesus can do by letting fear cause you to act wrongly. It's like a child who forgets that his father can protect him. But in case of trouble, he runs away into his room. Whereas his father is around. His father will ask him, where are you going? Hey, the boy is coming to beat me. The boy is coming to beat me. But he has forgotten that he is with his father. So, from the same story, you can say that the disciples forgot or they disregarded what Jesus could do for them. They were only acting in fear. Today, people are just acting in fear without thinking of what they are doing. So that is it with, the, with this point. The next point is that fear will let you forget the reality of things. You see, the reality of what happened on the Sea of Galilee was that the waves, the windstorm could never overwhelm and harm Jesus. It was not true that the windstorm could overtake my Lord Jesus and harm him. It is not true. So they forgot that. You have been with the man who is working miracles for you to say that you are amazed. So if the windstorm is, uh, uh, is rising against you, you have to have faith with the one you are with. But they forgot the reality. So please, many people have forgotten the reality of things. The reality of this period is that God is the true healer. The medical doctors can only treat. Listen, they are now struggling to come up with a vaccine against this virus. They are trying. The reality is that it is God who heals. I've always said, as a medical doctor, you can treat. But true healing comes from God. Why is it that they say that sometimes people who have tested negative become positive again? Why? Have you asked yourself? The human doctor said they are negative. All of a sudden, it became positive again. It means the reality is what I told you. The reality of what is happening again is that this is a spiritual problem. That is why some people are staying at home. Listen, it's a spiritual problem. Social distancing. Wear mask. It doesn't affect the demon. Oh, I'm telling you, if a demon wants to kill you, the mask is nothing. You can let one person stay uh, uh, in one place. Let the other person stand one, one meter or one kilometer away. If the demon wants to shoot you, it can shoot you. You are forgetting the reality. The reality is that what is happening is a spiritual problem. That is the reality. The disciples forgot that. So they were acting in fear. They forgot that this windstorm had no power over them. Please be reminded that this pandemic 
has no power over Christians who are under the cover of the blood of Jesus. Who are under the shadow of the Almighty. That is why I said in the radio program that if they say they have COVID-19, we can confidently say that we have covered 91. Hallelujah. We have covered 91 because we are under the shadow and the wings of the, of the almighty God in Psalm 91. So we are not afraid. That is the reality. This demon cannot harm me. It cannot harm my children. It cannot harm any true Christian. That is the reality. The next point is that fear can let you act funny. <laughs> very, very funny. <laughs> fear can let you act very funny. Uh, there was a guy who was being chased by the police. And when he got up, he just ran to the place where there was the wall. And he couldn't go any further because there was a wall. And he was just uh, trying to penetrate into the wall. The policeman even started laughing at him. Hey, hey, hey what you are doing is not possible. You cannot run through the wall. Uh, it's very funny. It's also like a guy who went to the supermarket and began to pick some of the things that he saw. He was stealing. He began to pick things. And when he thought he could vanish when he was caught. So when the, he was questioned by the security, what do I do? You are picking things. He said, no, you can't see me. I've vanished. I have magical powers and I've vanished. Then he said, stop your nonsense. Why can't I see you? You are the one standing. You say, I can't see you. <laughs> You are standing, but you say, I can't see you. You see, it's because of fear. You can act funny. I want to say that the world is acting funny. You're acting very, very funny. So I call it Christian concert party. In the other words, what I mean is that it's Christian comedy. Is it not funny that the God, my God, who created this world, you have shut his house and you are still saying, our only help is from God. Which God then are you calling to? Which God? It's funny. You are acting very funny. Stop acting funny and begin to act in faith. The disciples were acting funny. If you are with Jesus, why are you wasting your energy, putting what out, going here and there and saying all sorts of things? They were acting very funny. To the Lord, he will say, listen, look at these boys. They are acting very funny. So please, don't let coronavirus cause you to act funny. Mr. President, don't act funny. Lawmakers, don't act funny. So-called Christian, don't act funny. If you say you have faith in God, demonstrate it. And stop acting funny. God will be laughing at you. That you said you believed in me. But now, look at what you are doing. You see? Good. Fear will let you speak against God. People who have fear. Because they are so much induced with fear, they think God cannot help them. And that was what the disciples did in Mark chapter 4, verse 36 to 40. They said, Oh Lord, 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 don't you care that we are perishing? It was very, very uh, ridiculous. Why did they speak like that? They were acting in fear. They thought the Lord was careless. Don't you care? Don't you care that we are perishing? How do you say that the Lord doesn't care? He cares. He cares very much. You see, because of fear, they were speaking anyhow. Don't let this coronavirus cause you to speak against God. Many people may be speaking against God. Why is God allowing this? Why is God doing this? Why is God doing that? Ask yourself, before the coronavirus came, were you living for him? Maybe when I said, God has allowed this demon to destroy sinners, maybe it will be very offensive to you. But ask yourself, before the coronavirus came, how, how was your life? How was your life? Were you living for God or you were living your own life? You see? That is why it is in this period you have to show God that you have respect for him. Don't speak against him. If you speak against God in this period, you will be making your case worse. The disciples spoke against the Lord. It was all because of fear. 
So don't let fear cause you to speak anyhow. Why did God kill my father? Why did God do this? Ask yourself, was your father or your mother living for God? No. Or are you living for God yourself? No. So live for him and he can protect you. Okay, the next thing is that fear can let you forget what God can do. The disciples forgot what the Lord Jesus can do. They forgot. They forgot that in John chapter 1, it says that without Jesus was nothing made that was made. So you are with somebody through him, for him, and by him were all things made. So in this coronavirus, you don't forget what he can do. He can protect you from the virus. The blood of Jesus covers us and we are not in any way afraid. They forgot themselves. When the Lord woke up in Mark chapter 4, and verse 39 and said to the sea peace be still the bible says there was peace on the sea they were shocked they said eh, i see so this man can also speak to the sea yes let me ask you a question if you say god is a healer sometimes i was saying during the radio program that sometimes we sing songs we don't believe. There is no problem to be. God cannot solve it. We sing all sorts of t- songs. Now if you say there's no problem too big for God and you also say I am the Lord that he led thee or you are the Lord my healer. If you sing all these songs let me ask you a question. How will I see that your God and our God is a healer? When would I know? It is in time of pandemic. It is in this time of epidemic. And he said, we should not be afraid of any pestilence because he will protect us. So don't forget what God can do. Don't limit God. He can do exceedingly abundantly above everything we can ask or think about. We are dealing with almighty God who created the heavens and the earth. So don't forget yourself. You see, you have to understand what God can do for you. They forgot. They were shocked that God could rebuke the sea. You see, God was shocking them. Uh, Many of the things the Lord Jesus did when he was with the disciples was to show them that he had power over everything. Sometimes he would walk on the sea. It was all to show them that he had power over everything everything. Okay. The next thing is that fear will let you speak and belittle God as if he cannot protect you. Fear will let you speak and belittle God as if he cannot protect you. So the disciples said, don't you care that we are perishing? It means they were perishing and God or Jesus couldn't protect them. They belittled God. Many Christians have belittled God in this period. And it, it saddens me. It saddens me very much as a servant of God. Don't belittle God. Eh? I said the other time in, the radio, in a radio program that God is not a man in a book. God Almighty is real. He can protect his people. When Israel were in Egypt, he sent trouble on the Egyptians on one side. And on the other side, there was peace with the Israelites. In the same way, believe that God can do everything. He can protect you. Nothing can by no means harm you. He said in Psalm 91, that's why I said we have covered 91. He said, a thousand shall fall on your side and 10,000 at your right hand side. And it shall not come near you. It will not come near you. Believe him. Don't believe him. He can protect you. Lastly, Fear will let you run to the wrong person or wrong place. Fear will let you run to the wrong place or to the wrong person. Listen, if you are 
at home. And a monster is running, coming after you. And a soldier with a weapon is very close by where you stay. Where will you run to? Your father is inside the house. And you are sitting outside. A monster is running after you, coming to kill you. Will you run to your father or you run to the man with the weapon? Ask, answer that question. It will be wrong to run to your father because your father cannot protect you from the monster. The man with the weapon can shoot. Well, people of the world, coronavirus is running and chasing you. Don't run to human being. You have run to human being. You have run to medical doctors. It is good. Thank God for what they are doing for humanity. But when a spiritual, when a sickness is a spiritual disease, human doctors can do nothing. You run that, the boy can run to his father. The monster can come and have him. The wisest thing for such a boy to do is to run to the man with the weapon. God Almighty is very close to us. Instead of running to God, we have run to fellow human beings. They are human. They can only give human advice. Run to God Almighty. He alone has the solution. God is the answer. He is the answer. You have run to the wrong place. So run to Jesus and don't, don't depend on physical measures. The Lord Jesus was on the boat. Instead of calling Jesus, when the windstorm arose, they started doing their old things. When it got worse, they came to Jesus. Don't let things get worse before you come to my God. God is very close by you. Watch. You may be a sinner and the demon will be destroying sinners. As you are alive today, please run to Jesus. If you run to Jesus, will not charge you. You will not do anything. It is free of charge. Just say, Jesus, I want to take you as my Lord and personal Savior. Cry to him at home. By just saying these simple words. He will reveal himself to you. And he will save you. Coronavirus has no power over the children of God. That is why I want you to run to Jesus. He can do exceedingly. He has all power over his creation. So in our church, it has him power. I always say, with God, all things are possible. Believe in him and you will live. I will see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.